The first Hurry Hard of 2017 is on the air. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Manitoba Curling Show on Shaw TV. I am your host, Kevin Hirschfield. We begin the new year with a visit to the Pemina Curling Club, which recently co-hosted the Canola Junior Provincial Championships. In fact, as we're shooting this episode, the Junior Provincials are still going on. So that's going to be the focus of our episode today, Junior Curling in Manitoba. Kathy Goche is going to join us among a ton of titles. She is also a Junior Curling coach in this province. We'll talk to her about the state of Junior Curling in Manitoba. We'll learn a little bit about the Manitoba Junior Curling Tour as well. And we will have chats with the men's and women's provincial junior champions this year. So a jam-packed show ahead. But first, let's learn a little bit more about the Pemina Curling Club. For nearly 70 years, the Pemina Curling Club has been an important part of Winnipeg's Fort Gary region. The club opened in 1947. Late 1950s, early 60s, they decided to build a new curling arena. That new six-sheet curling arena was an expansion from the original four-sheet rink. And to this day, the Pemina remains in great shape. The club has been looked after very well by volunteer board over the years, and uh, when it was never left to go downhill, so we don't seem to have any problem getting clubs to sign on in here. We, as far as I know, we're full. Just recently this summer, we renovated and have a completely renovated and new looking uh, kitchen and eating area. We have put uh, TV cameras uh, throughout the club so you can have a good view of uh, any sheet of ice from, from anywhere. The most notable rink to come out of the Pemina, the two-time Manitoba men's champion skipped by Mike Riley. In 1984, Team Riley went on to win the Labatt Briar. The rink is also home to a successful junior program. Well, Kate, Caitlin Law has played out of here in the juniors, yeah, and uh, Reed Crothers played out of here in the juniors. Our junior program has been fairly good. And, uh, just love the club, it's, it's, it's home come here and you have people who uh, take you in as a friend right away, make you feel welcome. And we will be here for a long time. The heart is in, in, in the people of the pandemic. All right, pleased to be joined now by a Canadian curling champion. She's a TSN curling analyst and a junior curling coach here locally as well, Kathy Gochi. Kathy, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we want to talk to you a little about the state of junior curling in Manitoba. Before we do that, uh, you are the coach of one of the top junior women's teams in the province. That's the Christine McKay team. Your daughter's actually the third on the team, which is pretty cool. Give us an idea, though, uh, of how often these girls are on the ice and practicing and, and competing. And maybe, like, what does it take to be one of those top junior teams in the province? How much are they putting into it? Well, putting in a ton it's not like it used to be where you'd throw a couple of times a week I mean these are girls that are on the ice at least four times a week so we play one night we practice this set night and then we're either gone on a Thursday coming back on a Monday to compete or if not we're training both Saturdays and Sundays it's um it is a major commitment very similar to what you would do at a Scotty's right you've seen a lot of these teams then through coaching some of the women's teams and the men's teams I'm sure as well uh, how tough is our junior field here in this province maybe compared to others out there it's a great question. I think that, um, you know, we it, like every province, you have ebbs and flows. I mean, if you look at our junior men's field, for example, the last four Canadian champions have come from Manitoba. So that says it's really tough to get out. Uh, the women's, uh, it's been a, it has been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, our teams have won, they finished in the finals, and they finished out of the finals the last couple of years. But I would say that there's probably four or five teams that could win a provincial championship and do Manitoba very, very equally as proud. And that is much, more of a depth than you'll find most other provinces. You must have taken a look at my questions because my next question was about the men's side. Uh, as Kathy said, the last four Manitoba men's junior champions went on to win the Canadians. Those teams skipped, of course, by Matt Dunstone, Braden Calvert. Uh, Calvert has a chance to do it again here this year. Uh, no other province has won Canadian juniors four years in a row. Is that something we'll ever see again? Or should we kind of take time, sit back, and appreciate just how amazing of an accomplishment uh, this is by these Manitoba curlers? I think both. Uh, I don't think you can take anything away from, from Matt and Braden. Just such gifted players with such great teams. But in watching the junior men's, and you know, my son is a third on a, a top team, so I see a lot of the boys' side as well. 
Manitoba men are in really great shape and they're almost all tuckers and so we look at, you know, uh, those that have gone before, Vic, Jeff, Kerry, all the great Manitoba men, Mike McEwen, big tuckers, and that gives us a bit of an edge with the big weight shots. It's so important in junior men's curling. So uh, recognizing the strength of, of the program is awesome, but also I think there's a lot more coming. All right. Uh, it, for those of uh, you who have been watching the Hurry Hard Show, we've been to a couple, I guess, developmental stops. We were at the Rossmere a few episodes ago. Connie Laliberti, Janet Art, I think you know them a little bit. Uh, yeah. you? The Curl Manitoba High Performance Program. And then we were out in Morris, the Hamlins, uh, running the Cargo Curling Training Center out there, which is uh, a phenomenal spot for sure. What's the training like uh, in Manitoba compared to other provinces? Are we giving people, are we giving the juniors uh, more opportunities here than other provinces from what you've seen and heard? I think that we're growing um, our champions really young, which is really important. So if you are a developing player, if you're in that, I would say 15 to 17 year old category, if I were somewhere else, I would come here to train because it is becoming the elite. What I think other provinces do well is they take the 18 and 19 year olds and they work with them like at the Savile Center. They take those athletes that are about to win and make them champions or try to. Uh, but what we're doing is we're getting going back a little bit further. And so we have a successful program now, but I say you wait in four years and it looks like a domination sort of scenario because those kids will be that good. They're already that good. And, and just junior clubs, or junior programs of specific clubs, excuse me, uh, the Pemina has a strong one. Uh, I've heard Steve Vitell as well. I think you're involved in that one as well. Uh, do we see more and more kids getting involved? Where are we at in terms of kids just saying, hey, I want to curl and joining the program from when they're even as young as eight, nine years old? You know what, I think uh, there's two reasons kids start. Uh, one is that their parents uh, probably have played. We see a lot of names that we recognize. Um, some of it's forced. You will go out and do something and get off of your video games, and either is good. Uh, what I like to see is that the numbers are getting bigger. Uh, Bondsville's a couple of years ago, you would see maybe 10 junior teams. This year they were sold out. They were full. There were waiting lists. And so kids are competing more, and the age groups are... 13 and under, 15 and under. So the young kids aren't playing against the 20 year olds because it's pretty demoralizing, not only the height factor and the you know, the size of people that you're playing against, but you're playing against kids that are also falling when you're just learning. And so you don't feel awkward and you don't feel like you're misplaced. So I think that the numbers and the kids that are interested in playing is just, it's great because they are going up for sure. Kathy Goche, thank you so much for this. We'll let you get back to coaching and we look forward to seeing you at TSN uh, over the next couple of weeks. My pleasure. All right, back with more on Hurry Yard. The earliest curling stones had no handles, instead a hollow or niche for the finger and thumb of the player. These stones weighed between 5 and 25 pounds. 